together for Paul Madison. Thank you, Trina. Welcome, everybody. Good morning. Trina's taken away a lot of my uh, lot of my points here. I was going to uh, elaborate on what I've done, and I probably still will because she's only got some of it. So, uh, mm -hmm. uh, look, firstly, um, I'm very honoured to be uh, by New Zealand Maid's first ambassador. I'm sure <clears throat> I'm going to be the um, you know one of many that are going to come forward and push the brand, push New Zealand Maid, and um, and get out there and, uh, and and help us help us all because I think that's what we're all here for today. My background, um, which Trina touched on, 30 years in motor racing. So, uh, you know, it took uh, 10 years to become an overnight sensation. So, uh, lots of hard work, lots of hard grafting, networking, just anything I could do. You know, at the end of the day, I wanted, all I really wanted to do from, from leaving school was to be a motor racing driver. So, uh, you know, <clears throat> 10 years to become an overnight sen sensation. I got my big break in Europe uh, with Ford. And I uh, did 10 years in, in Europe, which uh, I come away with two world championships. And uh, then I sort of saw at the last part of my career in uh, V8 supercars and um, racing around Australia there with uh, the likes with uh, Dick Johnson Racing and uh, AAA Racing and, and, and quite a few Holden Racing team, which I finally finished my, uh, my career with. Um, well, my racing career, I've always promoted New Zealand. I've always had the flag, you know, with the flag where my name was and, and uh, my overall. So I've always, for my 30 years that I was involved in racing, I've always promoted New Zealand. And, and of course, I've always been known as the, the little Kiwi, you know, racing driver. So to be involved with Buy New Zealand Made and also my own business now, um, to push and promote uh, New Zealand Made is, uh, is a great fit for me. In the early days, you know, I kept at it. I never, never, ever gave up. I guess my motivation in those days, and I didn't want a real job. And uh, so that, that really, you know, that drove me on. I was passionate, determined, dedicated, and accountable. All words that we all know and would like to uh, aspire to, I'm sure, in our, in our own businesses. You know, I was accountable, accountable to my team um, and my sponsors because they were the ones that they kept me going. And uh, you know, ultimately, I put all those things together, and it led to uh, a successful career. Um, and as I said before, if we put all those, you know, passionate, determination, dedicated, and accountable together, they're all the things that we want to to uh, to use in our business. And they're all the things that I've used today in my in my business. I retired in 2008, uh, Bathurst. Um, what a fantastic track that was, and it, and it is, you know, it's, it is one of the best tracks in the world. Unfortunately, it took my career away from me, um, 200k into a concrete wall, it finished it pretty pretty quickly, so had some tremendous successes there, but uh, yeah, some pain as well. So I returned back in 2011, and, um, and I took over a broad Aegis oil company. Uh, my father had set the company up 30, 35 years ago, so he was to the age where he wanted to retire, and um, and uh, so we worked a deal out. Which, believe me, trying to deal with family and work a deal out is is probably one of the hardest things you ever have to do. But we got there, and uh, I was very excited about about taking it over. Um, Trina touched on today. Uh, Aegis Soil is New Zealand's only blending lubricant company, which we're very proud of. You know, yes, we could be like it, all the other oil companies and import all our products. But we don't want to do that. We want to keep New Zealand working. We, you know, all our products, uh, we blend, yes, we have to input our, our base products, but from there we blend them. New Zealand blending, we have health and safety rules, all the dramas that are associated with that. Um, and then all our packaging, covered boxes, tape, um, all our plastic containers, everything that we need to put it together is all made here in New Zealand. So we're, um, we're very, very proud of that. Um, the oil industry is 80 different oil brands out there, so it's a hell of a competitive market. Um, you know, and uh, you know, our point of difference is, is the fact that you know, we, we blend all our oils to an API specification, and it doesn't matter if it's all the international brands or any type of oil, it's all made to an API ACEA spec specification. Um, so really our point of difference is me, being Paul Radisich in, in the automotive industry, 
and um, and the fact that uh, we blend it and, and our product is made in New Zealand. So you know we push that very very hard. The uh, the oil industry is around about 80 million litres of of um, product imported into this country. So um, I'll try, and if I can achieve those small percentage numbers, I'd be very, very happy. So it is a, it is a big market. The oil company, I've, I've got uh, just over 20 people working for me, so it's a small number. Um, half of those are in the plant, and, uh, and the other half are out there on the road selling. Uh, and we sell nationwide, nationwide, as well as through the islands, Fiji, Niue, Cook Islands. So a good place to go for a holiday. Now, um, I've listed my top 10 tips in your booklets, which you've all got, so I'll quickly run through those and just give you some, some, some basic tips that I've brought with me from you know, being involved in, in motorsport for so long and, and, and there's so many things that have worked in motorsport because it's, you know, it's not only are you, are you out there racing, but you've also got to deal with the business side of it, and, and it's really no different to producing oil to to what I've been doing for such a long time. So, my uh, my number one tip is really all about networking. Everything that, that I've put around here is, is, is about networking, and, and, and networking is absolutely everything from the customers to the suppliers to the staff. You know, people need to understand. Uh, your business and, and there's only one way to do that and that's for you to tell them. Uh, they can't guess and surmise, you know. I always remember uh, in, in the motor racing workshops we'd put up a big sign, presume nothing, and, uh, and, and then we'd try and work on that, on that basis. So, you know, the networking side of it is, is I've always found a big part of, of, of everything I've done and no different to what I'm doing. What are the things that make your business different or better? Well, for my business, it's, it's me because I've been in the automotive side of it. I can lean on my 30 years of, of, uh, of motor racing and, and, and it's a good fit with the automotive market, with the lubrication market, the oil market. So, so that's, that's one of my strong points. And the fact that it's New Zealand made, you know, and that's, and, and I think I said before, it's, uh, we rely heavily and push it heavily and, and pull on the heartstrings of, uh, of our customers that, uh, you know, hey, you want to support New Zealand? Here's your opportunity because we are the only company that's producing something here and keeping the money here in New Zealand. You cannot do it all yourself. Have we all tried to do it ourselves? I have. And you only get so far. Um, I've, uh, over the last, um, the last 12 months, uh, which I'll introduce you to Darcy a little, a little later on, but, uh, you know, Darcy uh, has been my loud hailer. I'm not, I'm not a big get out there and here I am, da da da, and I do what I have to do, but I found that Darcy has come in, you know, who's been more of a marketing consultant for me, and, and he's really got out there, and he's, he's become my loud hailer. So, um, you know, it's, it, it is impossible to do it all yourself. We all talk about, well, you know, the problem is if you're working in your business, you can't always work on your business. So there's, there is a, there's a balance there. You've got to work in it, but you've also got to have the time to work on it. Be the go-to person. Um, you know, confront, confront all the issues. It's easy to say, oh, I won't take that phone call, I won't do this. And, but you know, I, I and I and I, I find this quite quite hard. Um, it doesn't matter if it's a complaint or an issue or something you've got to deal with. Um, I push myself to, to deal with it face to face, and no, don't push it on to someone else. I will deal with it. And then you know, by doing that, um, you tend to build up a better relationship. Um, the other thing I've I've, I've found is that um, I try not say. No, I, I try and say yes. Yeah, I can do that. Sometimes you just can't, but I try and I think about it first instead of saying, "Oh, I won't do that. It's too hard." I'll go, "Yeah, I can do that." And um, and I find that when I start to listen to other people try to sell me things, other suppliers, you know, uh, and I hear 
oh, we can't do that. Oh, I'll just switch off. I say, oh, thanks very much for your time and, and move on. So, you know, I've, I've found that by being that go-to person, um, lots of other avenues and other, other doors open, open for you. Use the same skill set to stay in touch with your sales representative. Who's got sales reps? You look very happy. <laughs> they're, 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 um, they're difficult to control, let's face it, it's probably the best way to say it. I, I give you some tips on, on what I do, and uh, you know, I'd, I'd love to hear some of your ideas, but um, uh, keeping them on task is, is really what it's about and knowing where they are. Um, so every week, you know, we've got a diary system, some work it well, some not so well. Um, so, we, you know, we keep, keep at them. But every week we do a conference call. It's a pain in the ass, but um, uh, it's something that it pulls everybody together. You know, they have their targets. Um, the targets go out, so they see them all on that Friday afternoon. And one thing they hate is they hate to be at the bottom of the list. So that's their motivation. And they, one, they know I'm going to talk to them every week, regardless if it's about nothing. Um, and secondly, they've, they've got their targets, which everybody gets to see. Now, I've had mixed reports, oh, you shouldn't do that. But I stopped it for a couple of weeks, and they all ring me, how did I do? What did I, where was I? What, you know? so, so it does, it does, it does work. So it's, it's really all about keeping them on, 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 you know, on point, keeping them on target, and, and achieve those, uh, those figures. Um, you have to back yourself. You have to back yourself and your product. Um, it goes without without saying. I, I know when I first took the business over, um, you know, and talking to to some of the guys, oh, I don't drop in there. I said, well, why don't you go there? Oh, because they look too big. They look too professional. They're, you know, there's a big mobile sign out the front, and and then over time we've been able to turn that thinking around where the guys now know, you know, what the product is, how the product's made, where it is, you know, how it's made, all those sorts of things. And they've got a lot more confidence in, in the products. Uh, and now they're, t they're calling on places um, uh, that they never would have stopped on before and, and, and are coming back to me going, hey, I'm, I'm surprised. They, they wanted to talk to me. They wanted, they wanted a product you know, to compete with the international, they want to support New Zealand made products. So, um, I, I think what, what I'm saying is, is they've got to, um, uh, you're only limited by your, your own you know, expectations and, uh, and sometimes you go in somewhere where you're not expecting too much, you can be very surprised. And that's, you know, all my reps have experienced that situation. Yeah, um, you are the best person to promote your business. Yes, of course you are. You know, it's it's the drive that that um, that everybody else doesn't have other than you because you know you've got everything on the line. So um, you're you're you, know, you are the best person to promote your business, and, and by pushing that message out to your people um, and your customers and, and and your suppliers and so forth, um, you know you are the best person without a doubt. Networking is a two-way thing, absolutely. Um, you know, can you add, I always look at, can, you've got a customer, can you add some value to that customer? Can you bring a supplier to him to save him some money? Can you bring him some personnel? Can you bring him customers? Is there another way of promoting his business, her business? Um, so it's a two-way two thing. Think about all those things all the time. If you can add value or you can, you can bring some customers to that, to your customer you're trying to achieve. Um, what a great feeling that is, you know. Whatever you can do to make it a two-way street is, is a great thing. Complacency, well, I don't know if I need to talk much on that. Can't be complacent, you know. Um, it's probably the, uh, uh, the biggest uh, downfall for, for a lot of People, a lot of customers, a lot of a lot of businesses. Where hey, we're all good now. You know, I don't need to find any new customers. Um, mm -hmm. Well, we do every day. You know, it's my my big push is, you know, this with target numbers that we have to achieve to find new customers. Because every, every day there's one falling away. Yeah, it may not be a big one, but 
you know, in our business, they're in and out and out. That we luckily touch whatever I can touch. That um, you know, we've got a great loyal customer base, but it's the only way that you're going to grow is by increasing your, you know, your customers. Um, and as they say, you know, I think um, uh, 80 80 percent of your business comes from 20 percent of your customers. Um, so you got to, you've got to keep chasing those new customers, and and, um, and perhaps as Darcy will tell you soon, you know, not to waste too much time on those that don't buy. You've got to spend a little bit of time with them. But you um, know, and, and, and I've experienced that myself with my guys. They spend lots and lots of time with a guy that'll buy five liters, and bugger all the time with someone that spends that buys a thousand liters. So you know, there's a there's a there's a, a, a real balance there that you don't want to lose those guys because you never quite know those ones that are not buying much when they might lose their current deal or things happen and you know yes you've got to be you've got to be around but not too much time. So they're my ten they're my ten points. I, if, when I drove for um, for Dick Johnson, uh, the Australian motor racing guy, um, very successful in Australia and. Um, and I, I had the privilege of driving with him with his last year before he retired. And he said to me, Paul, the only thing you get from looking backwards is a sore neck. <laughs> and I thought that was really good advice from Dick uh, and something that, uh, that we should all aspire to.